Hello guys, this is Pilot Yuna and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome! My name is Yuna Wu and I have my private pilot license and IFR rating and now I'm working on my commercial license. Before I forget every small details of Checkride, I just wanted to shoot the video to help you guys. The YouTube videos helped me a lot. Giving back, I'm here to share you guys with my information and what I think it's right to do and stuff like that. So today, I'm going to talk about my IFR checkride experience that I had a few days ago and also for the general tips for the checkride how to pass. So first, I'm going to start with the oral part in detail. So I downloaded my ACS documents in my iPad in the fourth flight so that I can just take a look whenever I want to. And I'm going to tell you guys what I missed and also what you should know before you go to an IFR checkride. When you start the oral part with your DPE, it's going to go over with your qualification as a pilot and also your airplane is airworthy. I'm not going to talk about all the details of the maintenance because it's just a basic private stuff. But you have to know what's AD um, of your airplane because he might ask you what is your... AD. The difference between the approved and non-approved navigation devices. He asked me if this iPad, the 4th flight, is good for GPS purposes. I said no because it's not FAA approved device. You have to know the difference between the MEL 91.205 and inoperative for 91.213. And he was also asking me about the PIC authority if I'm in distress, then I can technically do whatever I want because I'm the pilot in command. So he was asking me that. And then he was asking me the types of the holding, the holding entries, and also when you're doing hold, where is non-protective areas? He was asking me about the situations that could lead to loss of control or unusual flight attitudes. The answer was like illusions, it could be uh, distractions, it could be special disorientation, stuff like that. So he was looking for that. So for the navigation systems, uh, he was asking me how many satellites we have. So the answer is 24 satellites. So there is six orbits and four satellites. And we are using those satellites for our GPS. And also he was asking me the difference between the non-precision and precision approach. Let me see. So he, we, we went over everything. For the weather part, he had his own packet of the weather information. So like the probe chart and everything. So he was showing me and asking me if I can kind of interpret it. I was reading that. And also at the end of the package, there was a PIREP. And so I had to interpret that as well. So know how to interpret PIREPs. There are two types of PIREP, the Argent and then the just normal ones. And also Mitars and TEF, of course. And we went over the precision approach and everything, the non-precision approach. And for the mist approach, he was asking me, what are the three things that you can do when you do mist? And the answer was that we can divert or we can do holding or we can try a different approach. And he was asking me, what would you do when you're approaching this airport, but then you don't see the wrong way? What would you do? And then I answered, um, I would just go mist and uh, just fly at this minimum safe altitudes. And then you have to know for the circling, what's the minimum distance you should be on. So it's going to be 1.3 nautical miles from the wrong way. So he was asking me if, I, if I'm in the situations where I am doing my approach, but if the airplane is because of the weather tilted to the 90 degrees and you think you can land, would you land? And I said no, because it's not in centered and it's not appropriate things to do uh, and it could be dangerous. So I told him that and he said yes. When you lose your communications with the tower, what I should do? I told them that um, I'm going to double check if I have the different frequency than I was supposed to put in. And I'll, I would go back to the previous frequency and check with previous ATC if I have the right frequency. And the other situation might be that the headset's battery could be out or the transponder just simply don't work. So there are a lot of possibilities that could be the reason why the communication is not working. 
So finding that out was the first reactions that I would do. And also um, a squawking 7600 would be helpful. I answered that and... So for the flight portion, what we did was we did VOR runway 5 at Cochrane Airport and then we did IELTS runway 2 at Dublin and also the RNAV runway 2. My DPE was pretending as if he is the ATC and I was cleared for takeoff and everything. So I did the readback. So we flew off and we went to the Cochrane Airport to do the VOR 5. And then when we were flying to Cochrane, I made sure to listen to the ATIS and then briefing the plate and also tune in the frequency and identify that. Because he was giving me the vectors, I did not have to do the procedure turn, luckily, and so I did not do that. And I was able to do the approach successfully, and then he was giving me the alternate mist, and I climbed to 2500 and was giving me the vectors. On the way to the Dublin airport, we did the unusual attitude, and I love the unusual attitude procedures because it's very easy and fun. So I set up the GPS and then I didn't really think far ahead, but then my DPE was giving me kind of like hints about like what I should do. The missed approach is gonna be with using the VOR. So he was saying that and I was like, let me put in the VOR frequency. And then so it helped me a lot. That was one thing it could have been better if I knew and just put in the frequency before he talks about it. But yeah, for you guys to know, if there is VOR in missed approach, then set that frequency and get it standby so that you can just press that button and it's just set up the VOR for the published mist. On the way to do the ILS runway 2, I went over the descent and before land checklist and also briefing that plate and identify that localizer. And then after I do the ILS, um, we did the published mist and then I was doing the holding and then we left there and we did the RNAV runway 2 and your DP is gonna make your PFD go black so you're not gonna see anything but for G1000 I don't know how other avionics do but for G1000 if you just click the red button then it's gonna transfer to the MFD so the MFD becomes PFDs and also don't forget to communicate with your ATC. Because he was pretending to be an ATC, I said, Atlanta approach, one, two, three, Juliet, I've just lost my PFD, but I'm able to continue the approach. And he was like, one, two, three, Juliet, Roger. So he was saying that. So you have to let the ATC know because it's kind of like, it's, it's not emergency, but it's something for the safety of flight. And when you're doing the flight portion, always tell yourself about what you're doing or what you will do because that way your DPE knows what you're thinking and even if you make small mistakes um, don't freak out because it could be a big mistake to you but it could be small mistake to your DPE either he could just let it go or just stop you right there and fail you but most likely if you just state that what you did wrong and show them your corrections then you're gonna be okay Everyone makes mistakes. Even I made the mistakes and I got the rating. So don't be afraid making mistakes. I think what DP is looking for is how to fix the problems that you have. Yeah, that's it for my flight portion. And now we're going to talk about how I studied for my IFR check ride. So what I did was I made a lot of flashcards to just memorize myself. So these are the flashcards that I had. Um, I just wrote down everything that, even like small ones that I should memorize. I just wrote down everything. I I had like types of notum, I had like explain ILS and then the answer is back there. And then just uh, explain vacuum systems, describe the viewer limitations, receiver checks, so check sign off and types of the viewer. So I just wrote down every answer. I went over everything every night before I go to bed and it helped me a lot to memorize stuff. And I definitely recommend you to do that. And I carry this every time and everywhere I go, especially when I go to school, I was asking myself and answering myself, 
then to keeps reminding me and the other thing that i did was i printed out from the palettescafe.com and it helped me a lot it has everything to know about ifrs i read it so many times and i just added it what i think i should know this is about like medical stuff i did the highlighting and i did like added some more stuff that i should know so this packet helped me a lot and also the Glam book was really really helpful i don't have that book right now because i borrowed it from my instructor i'm gonna have a picture right here but um there is the acs and then according to that acs number or the alphabet there is the information you need to know about ifr and what helped me the most was watching the youtube videos so, so i was watching a lot of different youtube videos about how i pass my check ride and also some of the lectures that helped me a lot as i watching the video i was writing down the things that i didn't know i'm gonna put up the link below what videos helped me out the most so if you guys are studying for ifr then definitely go watch and just write it down and study with it it's gonna help you a lot the hardest part for me was to catching the glide slope because the glide slope was up then I should add more power and if the glide slope is down then I have to reduce the power and I did it constantly and my DP was saying like I should work more on how to adjust that airspeed and then just constantly and smoothly follow that glide slope and that was the hardest part because I move my throttle a lot and to give you the general advice for the check ride to pass, I'm sure many of you will gonna be really, really afraid of the DPE, but I think it's gonna be easier for you to, if you just think of him as your neighbors or your grandmother or your grandfather, your father or your friend. And that way you're gonna be a lot more comfortable and just think that it's not a test. It's just a flight, you're flying with your neighbors. I think that's a good way to put it. So don't be afraid of him. Um, he's there to help you and he wants you to also pass. So just keep that in mind. And if you make mistake, um, I know you're gonna make mistake. Don't think you're not gonna make mistake and you don't have to be perfect. Then just don't freak out. Just forget about it and just focus on the next things that you should do. And before your check ride, just constantly do your own assessment how far am I ready? Stuff like that. So scale zero out of 10, just level where you are. So for example, for me, what I did was two months before the check ride, I was at a scale of two. I studied a lot more and then I brought up my confidence to level of five. And then before two weeks, I knew that I was at level of eight. And then before one day, I was at 10. So you have to have that confidence in yourself that you are at this level so that you know which area you have to be more comfortable with or which area you have to study more. I think that's a really good idea to have your confidence with you and make sure your level should be at 10 by the time you're taking that check ride. And then a night before the check ride, please just sleep. So what I did was I mean, I was trying to go sleep early as possible, but I couldn't because in my head, like, I don't think I know this area, I have to study more. Like, and I studied a little bit more, but then like at the same time, I couldn't sleep. On my check ride day, because I was so tired, I couldn't really focus on what my DPE was saying. So please sleep, take enough rest, and before the check ride, prepare accordingly so that you don't have to study a night before your check ride and read your ACS. So my DPE was reading straight out from that ACS. And some of the questions I couldn't really understand what he was asking for. So I had to ask him over and over again. And you don't want that to happen. Just be familiar with your ACS. Just know if you understand that question and be able to answer that. And also when you answer, Try to keep it simple. If it's yes or no questions, it's yes or no. Or um, if he asks you about this specific instrument, then only talk about that, not the other things. Then he might ask you in detail about that and you don't want that to happen. So be simple, precise. And most importantly, if you don't understand, 
then ask him again because you don't want to give him the wrong answer without knowing the real questions that he's asking so make sure you know what he's asking and if you don't know please 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 ask I'm sure you're really really nervous about this tech ride and I don't want you to fail but if you fail don't worry it's not at the end of the world you're gonna have another chance just think of it as he maybe saved you from getting into an accident so that way just think positively and I think that will help you to prepare more onto the stuff that you have to work on so study hard Keep in mind the advice that I gave you today and also show them what you got. You have been practicing this a lot of times and you spent money on this so I know it's gonna be really hard but you can do it. You're gonna pass eventually, you're gonna walk out of your GPS room with a pass. So don't worry and just be confident and be well prepared. Alright, that was it for my video today. I hope my video was helpful for you and I'll see you in my next video.